Hi, in this video we're going to be multiplying decimals and we're going to be doing it by tens, hundreds and thousands. So by the end of this video you should be able to multiply any decimal by 10, 100 or 1000 and get an answer. So let's take a look. There's a few things we need to know when multiplying decimals by 10, 100 or 1000. The first one is that all numbers have a decimal point, even if they're not written with one. So a number like 35 can be written as 35 point zero. That decimal point is straight after the units column. Or a number like 4100 can be written as 4100.0. And that's because this decimal point, even though we may not write it, is always technically after the units column. That's very important. The other thing that we have to understand, and this is what we're trying to learn in this lesson, is that when we multiply by a 10, 100 or a 1000, we need to move the decimal point to the right for each zero that we are multiplying by. So as an example, let's say I wanted to do 4.15 and I wanted to multiply by 10. I'm multiplying by 10 which has one zero in it. This means that I'm going to take this decimal point and move it to the right one spot so it ends up between the one and the five. This means that 4.15 times 10 is actually going to be 41.5. Notice how the decimal point is one spot to the right between the 1 and the 5. Let's say that I had 3.26 and I wanted to multiply by 100. Well I've got two zeros in the question that I'm multiplying by. This means that I've got to take my decimal point and move it two spots to the right of my, of my original number. So 3.26 times 100 is going to be 326 point. Now this decimal point here can either be not written at all, so it'll just be 326, or you can write it as 326.0. Because that point zero isn't really necessary, we usually just write the answer as 326. Let's take a look at three examples that will showcase most of what you'll see when multiplying by tens, hundreds and thousands. In our first example, I'm being asked to multiply 4.61 by 10. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this decimal point right here and I'm going to move it to the right one spot because I'm multiplying by one zero in my question. So the decimal point needs to end up between the 6 and the 1, meaning that 4.61 times 10 is 46.1. Notice how the 461 in the question is the same as the 461 in the answer. The only thing that has changed is the position of the decimal point. Let's take a look at example number two where I have 0 0.2 and I'm multiplying by 100. I'm multiplying by two zeros which means that this decimal point needs to move two spots to the right. One, two. Now clearly you can see I'm, I'm jumping here but I'm jumping something that's not there. And when you jump something that's not there we have to put in a zero so that we keep our place value. So 0 0.2 times 100 is going to move our decimal point after this zero that we've put in and we get an answer of 20. Again, we could write 20.0 but that point zero is what we call superfluous, it's extra, we don't need it and so we end up writing just 20. The last example here has 10.01 and we're multi multiplying by a thousand. This means that we're going to move our decimal point to the right three spots. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Again, jumping something that's not there means I have to put in a zero. So my final answer is going to be one zero zero one zero. That is ten thousand and ten. And again, I could put the point zero on the end, but I'm not going to. And those are my three examples. So what should you write for this video? Well, the heading multiplying decimals by ten hundreds and thousands is a good start. And then having the very important point that all numbers have a decimal point and getting those two blue examples down. Then the rule, and the rule is when multiplying decimals by ten hundreds and thousands, we need to move the decimal point to the right for each zero in the question. Then I have two examples written there. They're pretty simple, so also having the three harder examples written down, as well as the arrow movements on how to move the decimal point, is also going to be a good idea. And that's it. Hopefully now you know how to multiply decimals by tens, hundreds and thousands, and that if you have any questions, you can always ask me during class. Good luck.